Welcome to this presentation on the neck, part two. During this uh, presentation, we're going to cover three subject areas. We're going to begin by looking at the thyroid gland. Secondly, we'll visit the stellate ganglion. And then lastly, uh, we'll visit the thoracic outlet. And as we move through each of these three topical areas, uh, we'll discuss clinical uh, correlations. So here we begin with the thyroid, and what I want you to understand here at the beginning is some really basic anatomy. First, the thyroid uh, is made up of lobes. Uh, here we see the right lobe. Next, we have the left lobe. And lastly, both lobes are connected by an isthmus. This particular slide uh, shows a very important clinical uh, relationship or anatomic relationship. And this is the relationship of the thyroid gland to the recurrent laryngeal nerves. Each uh, laryngeal nerve, here is the right recurrent laryngeal nerve. It's lying within the tracheoesophageal groove. And we see that groove between the trachea and the esophagus, which lies posteriorly. We also see the same relationship, however, it's unlabeled on the opposite side. So here's your left recurrent laryngeal nerve, and again, it travels in the tracheoesophageal groove on that particular slide. Clinically, uh, these are important um, during a thyroidectomy. The surgeon has to carefully identify these nerves and preserve them so they are not injured during the removal of the thyroid gland. We'll also demonstrate another clinical uh, correlation of the recurrence when we talk about uh, thyroid goiter. Here are some important uh, aspects about the recurrent uh, laryngeal nerves. Both recurrent laryngeal nerves are branches of the vagus nerve, and they will supply all the intrinsic laryngeal muscles with the exception of the cricothyroid. They are called recurrent as they come off the vagus nerve and then travel uh, back upwards to either side of the trachea and ultimately to their destination of the larynx. The left and right recurrent laryngeal nerves do have uh, some anatomic relationship uh, differences. The left recurrent laryngeal nerve loops around the aortic arch in the vicinity of the ligamentum arteriosum, whereas the right recurrent laryngeal nerve uh, loops more superiorly on the right side uh, and loops under the right subclavian artery. Here is an important clinical uh, correlation. Here we're looking at uh, goiter, and this particular uh, individual has a very enlarged thyroid gland, very large mass that's very visible. In this particular individual, uh, there are multiple uh, enlarged nodules. So this particular form of goiter is multinodular. Some of the symptoms that are associated uh, with a, a goiter are as follows. One is coughing. And this has a, a mass effect on uh, the respiratory uh, passageways and the larynx. A second uh, symptom is hoarseness. Uh, very large uh, goiters can involve the recurrent laryngeal nerves, and if they become involved, uh, then they're unable to effectively uh, activate the muscles uh, of the larynx and can then create the hoarseness. Another symptom that can be associated uh, with goiter is a difficulty swallowing, dysphagia, and this would be due to a mass effect. So the mass is compressing uh, the structures that convey uh, the bolus of food. And then lastly, again, due to a mass effect, 
you can have uh, compression of your respiratory passageways in the area of the trachea and making that uh, a problem for some patients. A very common uh, procedure to demonstrate uh, whether or not nodules are functional nodules or non-functional nodules is to uh, utilize a technetium 99M protectinate uh, scan. And we see uh, here in the image uh, the results of such a scan. Hot nodules are going to show up in this kind of coloration that we see here. This is due to the presence of functional thyroid nodules and they're taking up uh, the technetium 99. So this, these areas light up when you have a hot nodule uh, region. A cold, cold nodule is uh, not a functional nodule, so these types of nodules will not pick up the technetium. And uh, this area here represents a cold nodule in this scan. So here we are demonstrating, uh, more specifically, some of the aspects of a cold nodule. And again, it's this area here, non-functional. These are usually uh, benign. And then lastly, the odds of being malignant are going to be greater uh, than the, the hot nodules. Here we're looking at the uh, thyroid gland uh, with respect to a clinical procedure, its removal, a thyroidectomy. Some of the indications for a thyroidectomy are what we just went through, for example, a goiter. Uh, cancer of the thyroid gland would also be another indication for its uh, removal. And then lastly, uh, persistent hyperthyroidism. Uh, some complications associated with a thyroidectomy include bleeding from the vasculature, either arterial bleeding or venous bleeding. Infection is always a concern in any surgical procedure. As we discussed not too long ago, hoarseness of the voice can occur if there's surgical injury to uh, one of the recurrent laryngeal nerves. So again, it's very important to isolate them and protect them during a thyroidectomy. The last complication to highlight for your information is that some patients can have hypoparathyroidism. Uh, this is um, due to not being able to adequately identify the parathyroid glands before the removal of the thyroid. And as a result, the parathyroids are also removed, and then you do not have enough functional parathyroid tissue remaining uh, for them to carry out their, their function. 